Hi, welcome to one of my teaching videos. Uh, these are uh, videos about history, and I'm teaching right now about the history of early Christianity. At the very beginnings of Christianity, we see quite a diversity of groups, people believing all kinds of different things about Jesus. And so today I want to talk to you about the Ebionites. Uh, the word Ebionite probably comes from a Jewish word, um, Ebion, which means poor. So they were called the poor ones. Um, there is very little that we know about the Ebionites. And what we do know comes from their critics. And learning about somebody from their critics isn't always a good source. But the two uh, critics that tell us the most about them are St. Irenaeus. And uh, he wrote a book or several volumes called Against Heresies in the year 180 AD. And then the second source is Saint Epiphanius, and he wrote in the year 340 AD. Well, what these men teach us about the Ebionites is that they were a sect of Jewish Christian believers. They were Jewish uh, messianic adoptionist believers. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, these people were Jewish and they had no intention of giving up their Judaism. Jesus was Jewish. The apostles were Jewish. They kept the Jewish law and they uh, practiced it their entire lives. And so these people felt that their way of being followers of Jesus was closer than those who were promoting a Gentile type of Christianity by faith alone. They uh, enjoyed the writings of uh, James from the um, church in Jerusalem, and they pretty much thought that Paul was a heretic, uh, perverting Christianity and teaching all the wrong things. So obviously in their teaching, they never refer to the apostle Paul. Well, well, they um, are in agreement with Jewish people as a sect of Judaism in a number of ways. They eat kosher. They kept the Sabbath. They circumcised their babies and uh, pretty much followed the law as much as they could. But they differed in some very uh, significant ways. First of all, they believed that Jesus was the Messiah. Deuteronomy 18.15 quotes uh, Moses as saying that in the future, one would come who would be just like him, who would speak to God face to face, and that they should follow that one. And they believed that Jesus was that one. And on the instructions of Father Moses, they were following him. And so they believed Jesus was the Messiah. They also believed that Jesus was the sacrifice for sin, the final sacrifice. And so they don't participate in the Jewish sacrificial system. They were also vegetarian, different from both other Christians and other Jews. And it may not have been uh, today when somebody becomes vegetarian, it's often for health purposes. 
I know that's how we first became a vegetarian to our lower our cholesterol. And those of you who uh, wonder if it worked, I'll just throw out the um, commercial for vegetarianism that my husband lowered his cholesterol by 41 points in three months by giving up meat. Uh, that has nothing to do with history and you can just ignore it if you don't want to hear that kind of stuff. Anyway, they were vegetarian probably for um, other reasons because most of the meat eaten in the Roman Empire, in Jerusalem at least at that time, was meat that had been sacrificed in the temples, either the pagan temples or the Jewish temples. And because they were opting out of the sacrificial system, they weren't buying meat in the meat market. They were vegetarian. Um, what else do we know about them? Well, we don't know a whole lot more about them, except that they were declared heretical from uh, these uh, uh, people writing against heresies. But we do know uh, something important about their belief in Jesus, and it comes from their use of their gospel. Now, they had a gospel. Most people think it was a form of the Gospel of Matthew, something similar to Matthew, because Matthew is uh, considered the most Jewish of the Gospels. So something like Matthew, but without the first two chapters that talk about the birth of Jesus. And I'm not sure which came first, their belief that they uh, removed the first two chapters from Matthew or the fact that their gospel didn't give them this information. But they did not believe that Jesus was God. They believed Jesus was a human, 100% human man, the son, the physical son of Mary and Joseph. So in their gospel, they have no mention of Jesus being God or a virgin birth. They believe an adoptionist theory, and this is what I said I would explain. This happens at the baptism of Jesus. Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. And as he comes up out of the water, there is a voice from heaven that says, This is my beloved son. Today I have begotten him. And they believe that it is at this point that Jesus the man is adopted as the son of God. So they are Messianic, Jewish, adoptionist believers that at this point God adopts Jesus for his mission as sacrifice. And because Jesus fulfills his mission in complete obedience, obedience to the Jewish law, obedience to God to the point of death upon the cross, that he is resurrected and exalted, ascends to heaven and given the place of honor by the Father God. So these Christians are 100% uh, monotheistic. They do not believe that Jesus is the second person of any trinity. There is one God, as the Jews always believed, one God and one God only. Jesus becomes his adopted son at his baptism and is resurrected and exalted sort of as a reward. Now, they attempt to keep as much as they can the teachings of Jesus. They believe he was a great teacher and the adopted son of God. They have another book that is referred to and quoted occasionally, and it is called the Gospel of the Ebionites. 
except for a couple of quotes in um, uh, Irenaeus and uh, Epiphanius, there is, uh, we have no record of this book. It, it was lost to antiquity. Um, but we know that uh, in this book, it tells the story of John the Baptist. Now, you know, John the Baptist, one of the things he was known for was having a diet of uh, locusts and honey. He lived out in the wilderness, he wore strange clothes, and he ate uh, insects and honey. And because, we're presuming anyway, because you can change one letter in the word locust, and it becomes the word cake. The Gospel of, Ebi of the Ebionites is quoted as saying, John ate cake and honey, or some people say John ate pancakes and honey, because that would um, give support to their uh, custom of a vegetarian diet. We're not sure if the two groups, one written about in 180 AD and the other in 340, are exactly the same group. Uh, is one descended and evolved from the other, or were they two just similar groups that were uh, linked together and given the same name by a later scholar? We're not sure. And we're not sure exactly when they died out. Obviously, uh, Epi uh, Epiphanius is still writing about them at about the time of the Council of Nicaea when the doctrines and the teachings of the church are established as orthodox, what is definitely accepted and definitely not accepted. But as missionaries went out over the centuries, they would occasionally come across groups of Jewish believers in Jesus. As late as the 1100s, this is possible, uh, that some of the groups that they came across might have been descendants of the original Ebionite believers, but eventually they did disappear as a heretical group of Christians. They go down in history that way. It's kind of ironic, though, that the way they practiced their faith and the things they said were actually closer to what Jesus and the Twelve Apostles did than the later official uh, Orthodox Christianity became. And we can see whether it's a revival or a continuation of some of their beliefs today. There are still Christian groups who follow the teachings of Jesus and the adoptionist theory, but do not believe that Jesus is God and are. Um, not Trinitarian, they're Unitarian, they don't believe in a Trinity. And there are also what we call now Messianic Jews, Jewish people who have converted to Christian, no, who have accepted Jesus as their Savior, uh, accepted Jesus as Messiah, let me say. So they're could be considered Christian Christian. They're messianic Jews continuing the traditions of their Judaism while believing in Jesus, very similar to the Ebionites. And in the last couple of decades, there have been a number of traditional Christians who have reinstated some of the Jewish practices, for example, celebrating the feast days as part of their Christian practice, because they believe this brings them 
closer to the root of Christianity, which is deep in Judaism, of course, because our Messiah, Jesus, was a Jewish man. And uh, so they think that this gives them a better understanding and feel uh, and attachment to the faith. So we can see a number of things that Ebionites embraced that are still alive and well in Christianity today. Next time, I'm going to talk about a group that is at the absolute opposite end of the um, scale of Christian beliefs, who believe that, uh, well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you. You're just going to have to watch. And uh, those are the um, Marcionites. So next time we're going to visit them. I'll see you then.